Okay, example three, uh, we're asked to draw graphical ray diagrams for a concave mirror and also do the mathematics uh, to double check our results. So part A is asking uh, to place the object at 30 centimeters. So here's the object placed at 30 centimeters from the mirror and the center curvature to the mirror is 20 centimeters. It's noted here and therefore the focal length is half of that. That's 10 centimeters. So let's start off by drawing the ray diagram. Uh, so I'm going to draw all four rays. In reality, you only really need two rays to find the image, but it's good to practice with more than two rays. So the first ray is drawn parallel to the principal axis. So here we go. Here's the first ray coming along here. Gets to the mirror, and then it will go through the focus. And I usually like to put little arrows on here to show where the direction of the ray is going. And ray number two is drawn in the reverse order. So you're going to start off at the top of the object, but now going through the focal first, focal point. And then once it reaches the mirror, it's going to return parallel to the principal axis. So there's ray two. Ray three is the ray that goes through the top of the object through the center of curvature. And here we go, going through the center of curvature and then back onto itself back towards the original object. And remember, it's coming back onto itself because it's striking the mirror at a 90 degree angle here. And here is a fourth ray we can draw from the top of the object going towards the vertex. And it's going to reflect so that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And you'll see that all four rays intersect at the same point. So that means this, all this light emanated from the top of this arrow. That means then now the top of the arrow is below the principal axis, which means it's inverted. So let's go ahead now and draw the image. And so you can see that this image is inverted. It is smaller than the original object. And it's a real image because all these rays intersect at an actual place. So when the rays intersect in front of the mirror, that is considered a real image. So let's check our construction by computing the image distance and the magnification for the image. So we'll start by using our equation relating the image distance, the object distance, and the focal length, and then make the substitutions. The image distance is what we're looking for. So the object distance is given in this problem as 30 centimeters. And the focal length, um, well, they tell you the radius of curvature is 20, and hopefully you'll realize that the focal length is half of that radius of curvature. So that would mean that it would be 10 centimeters. So if you go ahead and plug that in your calculator, you're going to get an image distance of 15 centimeters. And that means that the image is 15 centimeters in front of the mirror. If you remember our sign convention, when you end up with a positive image distance, that means that the image is in front of the mirror. Furthermore, since we end up with a positive image distance, that also tells us that the image is real. Had the image distance become negative, then it would be a virtual image. So now we need to decide whether the uh, calculate by mathematics to see if the image is smaller, indeed, and whether it's inverted. So we use the magnification relating the image distance to the object distance, SI over SO. That's negative 15 centimeters all over an object distance of 30 centimeters. And that gives us negative a half. So this also tells us two things here. This tells us, first of all, the negative sign tells us the image is inverted. And secondly, since this uh, coefficient here is less than one, then the image is smaller. Okay, and so hopefully you'll see that this distance in here, SI, is 15 centimeters. Uh, the focal length was given as 10 centimeters, and the object distance, SO, was 30 centimeters. 
And so if you had drawn this out to scale, it would come out to hopefully very close to what you got mathematically. So now let's move on to part B, where we place an image at the center curvature. So I'm going to now construct the first ray, which is parallel to the principal axis, and then goes through the focus. I'll probably have to just fix this a little bit. And now I'll go ahead and construct the second ray, but I'll be using a little bit more of a straight edge now. So I'll go ahead and construct the second ray for you. And that goes from the top of the object through the focus to the mirror. And then goes parallel to the principal axis. And you'll see I won't draw this third ray that would go from the top of the object through the center curvature because there's really going to be no mirror down here. So uh, in this particular case, we don't draw the third ray, but we can draw the fourth ray, which goes from the top of the object to the vertex, and then from the vertex, um, obeying the law of reflection, and then ending up with the intersection over here. And so now I'll find that my image is right directly underneath my object, and it's right here. It looks like it's almost exactly the same size, and the image distance is the same as the object distance. So let's now go ahead and compute the mathematics and see if that matches up with our ray diagram. Okay, 1 over SI equals, or 1 over SI plus 1 over SO equals 1 over F. Our object distance was uh, 20 centimeters, and our focal length is 10 centimeters. And so if you compute that, you'll get an image distance of 20 centimeters. And this tells us the image is real because it's positive image distance, because it's in front of the mirror. Uh, and now we'll go ahead with the mapcation, negative SI over SO. Um, negative 20 over 20 gives us negative 1. So this tells us two things. The image is inverted. That's because we have a negative sign. And same size because magnification is 1. So now let's examine the situation when we put the object now at the focal point of a mirror. And now we'll start with uh, drawing ray 1, which is going to go from the top of the object parallel to the principal axis. And then it will go through the focus, which is over here right underneath the object. And ray two, which would go from the top of the object through the focus and then going off parallel, we're not going to show that one because it's not going to strike the mirror. So let's now skip ray two and go to ray three. Now ray three is coming from the center of curvature and going towards the mirror. Uh, well, it's in line with that. So we need to have a ray that is drawn from the, um, so it's in line with the center curvature going towards to the top. You need to start the light coming from the top of the object going towards the mirror. Then it reflects the, at the mirror at 90 degrees. So then it's going to come back on through the center curvature here. And the fourth ray goes from the top of the object towards the vertex. And then it's going to leave such that it obeys the law of reflection roughly around there. And so, and hopefully you'll see that these three rays here should be parallel outgoing rays that are going to correspond to an image that is formed at infinity. So let's now go to the mathematics and uh, use our equations to compute the distances and see what we get. So if we start with 1 over SI plus 1 over SO equals 1 over F, uh, the image has been placed at the focal length, which is, or the object is, let's place that, so it's 1 over 10, and 1 over 10 for both of them, and you'll see you have 1 over SI equals 0, and so SI is basically 1 divided by 0, which is undefined, or really is basically infinity. And your magnification will be negative SI over SO, that's negative infinity all over 10, which is also, which is negative infinity.
So this means our image is formed at infinity, which is physically impossible, so we, we get no real clear image. So one could say there is no image formed, or you could say that the image is formed at infinity, and it's infinitely large. Okay, so now let's move on to part C. What would happen if you put, or part D, if you put the object now in between the focus and the vertex? And let's go ahead and construct the ray diagram for this one. And the first ray goes from the top of the object towards the mirror, parallel to the principal axis, and then it's going to reflect through the focus. And the second ray is going to be coming from the top of the object, not moving towards the focus, but in a line that is coming from the focus. So going from the top of the object and in this line, but keep going this way. And then it's going to reflect from the mirror going parallel. And so here we go, we are drawing that outgoing ray from here, and then leaving parallel to the principal axis here. And the third um, line or ray is coming from the top of the object, but emanating from a direction from C. So we use a little dotted line normally here to start it off, just like we did over here, but this is really not where the light's coming from. And we draw a ray going from the top of the object along that dotted line, striking the mirror and then coming back onto itself because it's striking the mirror at a 90 degree angle. And that's ray three. And ray four is from the top of the object towards the vertex. And then from the vertex, it will follow a path that is at an angle that is equal to that. And I'm not sure if I've drawn that right, so I may need to fix that ray. And so in this particular case, you can see that all four of these diverging rays are never ever going to in intersect in front of the mirror. So that means that when you look at each of these rays, if you were to put the eyeball at different locations, you would be looking at this light coming from this red line and thinking it's coming from back here, and the black one coming from back here, and the blue one coming back here, and the orange one coming back here, and somewhere in here behind the mirror, your eye would be thinking the image is back there. So what we need to do is we need to um, show this outgoing beam and show a dotted path back here. Remember, this is important that you put dotted lines in here because you really don't want to say that the light is going through the mirror where it doesn't actually. It's just your eye is tricked in thinking it's behind here. So now you're going to dash your lines behind here. So we'll start with the red line. And so I'm going to continue this line backwards such that it is parallel to the original line. So extend that a little bit back here. And then we'll do that with the um, black line as well. And once again, that is being stretched along in the same direction in here as my ruler was before. And then we'll do that for the blue line as well. And well, it looks like we have a little bit of an error here because these should all line up. So we may need to just re-examine to see if these were drawn properly. So I may just, just fix this up a little bit. So I just fixed it up a little bit. I fixed up some of the rays and uh, sometimes you might have to do that to make sure they all intersect. Um, you'll see the red, or what I've done, it, important to realize is that you're you're extending the outgoing ray, so the reflected parts are extended backwards. Never extend these ones, you're extending the ones because your eyeball will be looking through here at this light and seeing this extend back here. You'll be looking at this blue, uh, this light coming from here, and it's going to extend that part all the way up here. And then if your eyeball was looking through at this light, it would be thinking that light's coming from back over here. So our final image, the top of this light here, that light, your eye is going to think it's over here now, and you're going to basically see an object that now looks larger, is upright, and it's behind the mirror, which means it's virtual. So now let's check our mathematics to see if this corresponds with this. And so we have 1 over SI plus 1 over SO equals 1 over F. The object distance was placed at half that focal length, which was five centimeters. And the focal length was 10 centimeters. And you're gonna get an image distance that is negative 10 centimeters. This means that the image is 10 centimeters behind the mirror. And the reason why you're saying behind is because you ended up with a negative image distance. Therefore, the image is virtual. 
So you'll find that you'll get a virtual image when you place that object in between the focal point and the vertex. It's always going to be virtual. And uh, the, the closer you bring this object closer to that focal point, the bigger this object, be, this image becomes. So you can play around and see what happens to the uh, image distance as you move around the object. So between F and V. The magnification is negative SI over SO. And so that will be negative of negative 10 centimeters divided by the object distance, which was 5 centimeters. And so that gives us a magnification of positive 2. This tells us two things. The image is upright because we have a positive magnification. And it is larger, two times larger, by the factor that it's 2. OK, and that is for it for this example. I will add just two things to reflect upon with regards to this question. Uh, first of all, when you place the object beyond the center of curvature, you find that the image is always smaller, and it's inverted, and it's real. When you place the object right at the center of curvature, you'll always get an equal size object, and it's real, and it's right underneath it. It's inverted as well. However, if you put an object placed at the focal point, you never get an image because the image is formed at infinity. And lastly, when you place an object between the focal point and the vertex, you'll get a virtual image that will be always larger and upright. Um, so you hopefully you'll see that from concave mirrors, you get both real and virtual images. And that's going to be different from what we see with a convex mirror in the next example. Okay, and that's it for this example.